This is the Ace Pro, the world's first 8K action camera from Insta360. And this is the GoPro 12. And this is the DJI Action 4. And I'm gonna be comparing all three to help you decide which is the best. Action cameras have many uses. Vlogging, filming your pets, travel content, sports, and of course, filming action. I've tried them all, as well as filming professionally for a variety of clients. And so I'm gonna use that information and that experience to help you decide which camera, if any, is the right one for you. So let's talk about the mounting system. The DJI Action 4 is a quick release, as is the Insta360 Ace Pro. But the GoPro Hero 12 actually isn't quick release by standard. The really good thing about the GoPro is you can have it as a quick release if you want to, thanks to the new quarter 20 mount screw hole at the bottom. But if you want to fix it somewhere permanently, with the GoPro it has the folding down fingers. And of course, there is a massive back catalogue of GoPro mounts. But anyway, I think it's time to set up some time lapses. So for this first time lapse, you can see the differences where the DJI Action 4 struggled slightly with exposure levels, but they're all fairly even. And now for a time lapse from another location. The Ace Pro did the best job of maintaining exposure on the lower half of the image. Now let's get back to the beach. So right now the time lapse is over, but the sun's gone down on me and now I need to get out of this area. The Ace Pro is clearly easiest to see. It's the best screen for this kind of vlogging situation. What a legend. So now I want to look at the vlogging capabilities of these cameras. So they're all currently set in their linear or de-warp standard modes. So it looks the most normal uh, compared to like a normal sort of vlogging camera setup. And they're all in the same white balance, same sharpness, stabilization on the highest settings. But really right now I want to talk about the build quality of these cameras. The DJI, it's great that it comes in this plastic hard shell case because that does add extra protection and you're pretty much encouraged to use it because you can quickly swap between different orientations. But it does add a level of robustness to the camera and a feeling of security when using it in case you were to drop it. And to take it out is relatively simple. You're just pushing on that mechanism there. Let's just turn it off. And then the camera slides out. Now you can't do this when it's connected to the bottom to your mounting system. The slides and mechanisms feel okay. Uh, you have to press the button physically in order to slide it out so you can't just slide it from pushing on the edge or forcing it so it's less likely to come open by accident. It looks well machined, well manufactured and it feels okay if not a little cheap feeling but you feel assured that if you drop it it's going to be fine and as I said the touch screen is really responsive, works excellently. The GoPro has a very similar feeling plastic around it to the DJI action camera. And you know, it just feels like plastic. Plastic never really feels premium. But the rubber around the edge is really nicely made. Uh, it looks quite cool as well, the blue speckles. And it's adding protection where you need it on the edges. Touchscreen works pretty well. It doesn't quite feel as snappy as the DJI but it's never really held me back from what, I've needed, what I need to do, so no complaints there. The button pops out a similar amount as the DJI, and it's got that nice rubber feel to it. You only have one door to open, and it's actually so robust, it's virtually impossible to accidentally open this. You really have to physically push down here in order to open this door up. Uh, the lens cover is easily replaced. It's very cheap to replace, but all in all, the menu system, the touchscreen works really, really well. The legs that poke out of the bottom, which now have a screw hole so you can mount a quick release like I've done here, they are the most reassuring of all the mounting systems we have here because it's really fixed in place. So with the Ace Pro we do have a similar feeling plastic around the body, 
and what seems like a really thin layer of rubber on the edges. Enough to add that bit of protection, but not as much as the GoPro, to the extent where it doesn't feel quite as robust. Um, the doors have a nice action, so this massive side door has a nice action to it, as does the side door, but the only issue with them is that isn't a button, it just looks like it, so it can slide quite easily open if you knock it and it could pop open and this door here if you push on the corner you can pop it open you don't need to operate it from the bottom so slightly more chance of you accidentally popping those open when you don't really want to the screen flips up but it does feel robust and it clicks into place solidly you have to press the buttons on both sides in order to detach it so you can open it up so I'm not too worried about the screen unless I had it popped open and I'm doing something really fast and it drops. Then there might be an issue. But the hinge is really, really strong and um, no problems so far. The screen is really responsive, just like the Action 4. And um, the front screen is not a touch screen and you can't see yourself on it, but you don't really need to because you can flip this screen round. The lens cover is it looks really nice, the glass seems really high quality, but technically you shouldn't be removing it. Although you can actually do it, and if you watch to the end of the video, I'm actually going to force this open with a tool I've bought off the internet to see how they've actually attached it on there. The quick release mechanism, with its standard mount that it comes with, which is what I've got the 360 camera on now, it's not the most pleasant to use, but if you, if you opt for their more expensive version, it just goes on like a dream. And then you can even put the switch across and lock it in place. It's by far the best quick release mounting system for all of the action cameras. So really impressed with this one, but you have to pay extra to buy that. It doesn't come with the package at the moment. And if it does ever, I'll add a link below where you can get them both together. For these time lapses, the GoPro gives you a whole range of settings, whereas the DJI and Ace Pro give you very limited adjustments. In fact, they're locked at 30 FPS. Let's check out those internal mics. I'm just testing out the HDR mode. So both the GoPro 12 and the Ace Pro have HDR enabled now, which means that my face should be better exposed, especially under scenarios like this where you've got a big bright light behind you. So hopefully the exposure's more even now and better across the whole image. The Action 4 doesn't actually have a HDR mode here, so that's gonna remain the same. Okay, so HDR is now off on the Ace Pro and GoPro 12. Obviously, it doesn't exist on the Action 4. And let's see if that makes a difference when I'm backlit again with that bright sky behind. Now, does it actually make any difference? So now we have the GoPro in log and both the other cameras are in their standard profiles. So there we go, the backlit situation. So with log, it's supposed to give you a bigger dynamic range. So more details retained in the shadows and the highlights, which means that if there's a bigger contrast in the dark and light areas, you're more likely to capture more of that detail and information on a log profile over any sort of other kind of profile. Okay, now we're going to try the horizon lock. Going around these trees. So if I come at an angle, you can see some cameras. This is really dodgy. As I'm going around, which of them actually maintain that upright position? Obviously the GoPro works full 360 all the way around. So in camera, you can only do the 360 horizon lock on the GoPro in 4K and above, but the DJI can do it in 2.7K, and the Ace Pro, you can do it in 4K, but only by using the app. So here's a comparison of the widest fields of view available for each camera. The Action 4 does capture more in the width of the frame, but the GoPro 12 
has slightly more top and bottom with its taller sensor. But the Ace Pro has a trick up its sleeve, allowing you, in the middle of filming, to crop in on the sensor and zoom in with their clarity zoom function, while still maintaining a 4K image. That's not the only great new feature. The Ace Pro also has pure video mode, which really improves your low light filming. When comparing the three cameras with the Ace Pro in its pure video mode, you can clearly see the difference. No pun intended. And just to compare, when not using the pure video mode, it just looks like the other two cameras essentially. So with pure video mode back on, I decided to try some running to see the difference there. The stabilization is much more effective on the Ace Pro in its pure video mode. Really surprised by this feature actually. So for these battery life tests, so I put them all in the same settings and the Ace Pro lasted one hour, 20 minutes before it ran out of battery. The GoPro 12 lasted one hour, 28 minutes before it ran out of battery and the Action 4 lasted one hour, 31 minutes. So just slightly longer than the GoPro 12. Insta360 promised that the Ace Pro can charge with rapid PD fast charging up to 80% in just 22 minutes. So I thought I'd put it to the test. So after charging for 22 minutes, it's hard to say exactly how much battery was there, but it certainly is three, three quarters of the way up. So it could be about 80%. The DJI Action 4 has a similar claim, except they say it can get up to 80% charged in just 18 minutes. But after 18 minutes, I only had 56% charge, which is still good, but not quite what they claim. So to test the sharpness, I use these sharpness test boards. So starting with 20 centimeters away and another one at 60 centimeters, I decided to see what would happen if I used a close-up filter. You can see when you add the diopter, it does improve the focus of the closer one. The one at 60 centimeters goes out of focus. And the same test with the GoPro. Again, we can see there is an improvement with the close-up filter. And now for the Ace Pro. So we can see a definite improvement with the Ace Pro at this distance. But I wasn't done there. So I decided to test it 30, 40 and 50 centimeters as well. And here are the results. So with the 30 centimeter distance, there is still a slight improvement on all three cameras, but there's the added benefit of throwing the background out of focus. So if you want to isolate your subject, this filter is useful for that. So at 40 centimeters, I'd say, that all three cameras actually show a lack of focus with the filter. So at 40 centimeters away and then 50, it's exactly the same. There's no need for the close-up filter at 50. So as promised, I'm now going to remove the lens cover on the Ace Pro. So I've got this spanner tool here I bought off the internet. I'll put a link below if anyone else wants to grab one. So this is the first time I'm gonna undo it. And actually, it was not as hard to open as I thought. It was much easier with that tool. And then it just clips back on very, very simply. Know that if you remove this lens cover, you could be voiding your warranty. So be very cautious if you choose to do this yourself. So one reason you might want to remove it is if you want to add an ND filter and you don't want to slide it over the top. If we have a look inside, you can see in these two areas, there's a little bit of glue and on the actual lens cover, there's also those two bits of glue that were just holding it slightly in place.